This video is all about problem solving and application. And I like this because you'll be able to say, see a real connection between what you're doing in class and how this might be used in the world around you. So it says we must now use what we know about three-dimensional figures together with what we know about other aspects of math in order to solve various types of problems. And again, I think this is fun and interesting. In example one, it says trees that are cut down and stripped of their branches for timber are approximately cylindrical. And I'm going to take my pen and underline that word cylindrical because that gives me a clue or a key as to what type of geometric figure we're going to be working with. A timber company specializes in a certain type of tree. And the typical diameter of this tree is 50 centimeters. And a typical height of this tree is about 10 meters. The density of the wood is 380 kilo kilograms per cubic meter. And the wood can be sold at a rate of $4.75 per kilogram. Determine and state the minimum number of whole trees that we need to sell in order to raise at least $50,000. And this problem is so good or so full of such good information that it's hard to even decide where I'm going to begin. I think I'm going to start with that word cylindrical. So cylindrical means obviously in the shape of a cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a nice generously sized cylinder that will represent or model the trees in this particular problem. So there's my cylindrical shape tree trunk. And it says the typical diameter of this guy is 50 centimeters. So if the diameter is 50 centimeters, I know the radius is 25 centimeters. Height of this tree is typically about 10 meters. So I'll go ahead and label the height. The density of the wood is 380 kilograms per cubic meter. Well, the density isn't going to help me find volume or surface area, so I'm going to hold off on that for the time being. And the mass, at the, or the mass sold at the rate of $4.75 per kilogram, that's not going to help me solve or find surface area or volume. So I'm going to put that on the back burner for now. It says, determine and state the minimum number of whole trees that must be sold to raise at least $50,000. Well, I noticed that this density is expressed per cubic meter. And the fact that I'm looking at cubic meters here is a key indication to me that we're looking for volume. The other thing that disturbs me as I look at this problem is I notice the differ difference in dimensions. One of those dimensions is given in centimeters, the other dimension is given in meters. Since it's telling me that the density of this wood is measured in cubic meters, I'm going to change both my dimensions to meters. So this guy here, the 10 meters for the height, I'm good with, but the 25 centimeters, I'm going to move the decimal point two places and make that 25 hundredths of a meter. So now I'm looking at dimensions in meters for the radius dimensions in meters for the height. Since they have the same dimensions, I'm all set to go ahead and determine the volume. So first thing I'm going to do is put the formula down. Formula for a cylinder is area of the base times the height. My base is a circle. And the formula for finding the area of a circle is pi times r squared. My radius here is 25 hundredths of a meter. So when all is said and done and I punch that into my calculator, it tells me 0 0.0625 times pi is the area of that base. So I'm now going to take that measurement and go ahead and substitute it into my formula. Times the height of the tree, which is approximately 10. I'm going to go ahead and multiply the 10 times the 0 0.06. So 0 0.625 times pi cubic meters. 
and that's in each tree. So I might even leave myself a little note as to what these numbers represent so that I don't get confused as to what I'm talking about as I work through the problem. Now, I'm going to leave my volume in terms of pi, but if you would feel more comfortable, feel free to multiply 0 0.625 times the pi button on your calculator. However, if you choose to do that, I need to see all of the decimal places in your work as you proceed through the problem. All right, so that's the volume in each and every one of those tree trunks. Now I'm going to go figure out how many kilograms that would be in each and every tree trunk. And to find the number of kilograms, I'm going to multiply the volume in each tree times 380 kilograms per cubic meter. And again, since I have a lot of numbers running around on my paper here, I'm going to label that this represents the number of kilograms. The number of kilograms is going to be the 0 0.625 pi times the 380 kilograms per cubic meter. So again, I'm going to leave my answer in terms of pi as long as I can. So I'm going to multiply the 0 0.625 times 380. So the number of kilograms that I have that I'm working with here is going to be equal to 237.5 times pi. And again, if you would rather work with a quote real number, you can multiply times the pi. Just make sure you carry all of the decimal places through in your calculations. OK, the other thing that I know is that for every kilogram, we're going to earn $475.75. So in order to find the dollar amount that I'm going to earn in each tree, so I'm going to say money per tree. I'm going to multiply the kilograms to 37.5 times pi times $4.75 that I get for each kilogram. So the money per tree, or the dollars per tree, again, I'm using my calculator, the 237.5, and that had a pi attached to it. So again, I'm just going to multiply the 237.5 times the 4.75. So 1,128.125 times pi. And now we want to figure out how many trees we need to have in order to be in excess of $50,000. So in order to have at least $50,000. So I'm going to take the amount that I would get for each tree, 1,128.125 pi. I'm going to multiply that times the number of trees that we need. And I want that number to be at least, so greater than or equal to, $50,000. And we haven't solved any inequalities yet this year in geometry, but you did last year in algebra. So you need to make sure that you bring with you those equations or inequality solving skills to undo multiplying by 1,128.125 pi, I'm going to divide both sides by that. It's a positive number, so I don't need to worry about reversing the direction of my inequality. Then again, if you have that full decimal place number in place of my number in terms of pi, feel free to use that in your calculations. And I end up with x has got to be greater than 14.1079 and then a whole bunch of other decimals. So the question says the smallest number of whole trees. So that means we must need at least 15 trees in order to earn the $50,000. Now this is an interesting question to look at because it has a lot of elements to it. This is also one of the sample questions that New York State put out uh, so that kids would be aware of what they needed to know and be able to do 
on that Common Core Regents exam uh, in geometry. All right, like always, I want you to summarize in your own words the key ideas and important understandings from the video. And then you can go ahead and try the question on the next page. This one is not as detailed, not as in-depth as the one that I did with the trees. There is a typo in this question that you need to be aware of here. In the uh, second line or the second paragraph, it should say the maximum capacity of the contractor's trailer is 900 kilograms.